<laughs> hey guys, my name is Brendan De Silva. I am the lead of the De Silva team, as you know. Juan Carlos over here, this good looking stud, will be joining us today. We're going to have a little podcast session for you. Uh, the beauty of today is Juan Carlos is you know, a friend, a mentor, a brother in Christ, and so much more to me. I've known Juan for eight years. Been eight, that long. Yeah, eight years. Eight, uh, yeah, yeah, eight years, for yeah, sure. Eight, long, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. eight years. We've been through the peaks and the valleys, kind of, you know, brotherhood. And it's so cool because they were talking about leadership. You know, as you guys know, I am a business leader, right? I lead a team of 10 full time real estate professionals. And Juan Carlos leads a church, actually. He's a pastor at, you know, this beautiful, 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 beautiful church um, that we're at right now. Should we give the name to them? Right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. The Life Christian Church. There you go. In West Orange. If you haven't joined, you better join ASAP. It's a great church. Big fan of the church. No plug. They're not sponsoring this. Um, but no, I just want to talk about leadership. Uh, Juan and I, we met at college, uh, Naya College, and then we, you know, we kind of went our separate ways um, afterwards. And then, you know, Juan was actually pivotal, pivotal in my real estate uh, journey. And you actually led me in a sense. If you think about it, because you got me in. So I, when I got into real estate, I called Juan Carlos. I just got rejected from a job. And what did you say? I don't know if you remember. You were like, Brendan, you should try real estate. You should try real estate. And I got denied a job making like 12 bucks an hour. And I was like, oh my God. And with a degree. And I was like, oh my gosh, this stinks. I'm never going to make it. And I was so depressed. I was so anxious. Like, this was really my story. And then thankfully, Juan um, was you know, gracious enough. I called him. He said, Brendan, you should get real estate. And we called I don't have the money for the class. The class is $440. Boom, $440. Is this still $440? I have probably more now, maybe like 500 now, but it's it was 440, and he said, hey, listen, I have $400 I can give you. I don't have 440, I give 400. So I call it and I negotiate the price down, he ends up paying for the class. But how long ago was this? Uh, three years and uh, six months, so actually three and a half years. Three That's and a half crazy. years. That's You see, just to give, give you an idea of the longevity of things. Um, so three and a half years, over three and a half years. And Juan Carlos was so gracious enough that he blessed me, then he brought me into real estate. Um, you know, last thing I'll say is I, I was actually going to quit real estate one day. And this is just a huge leadership moment. Oftentimes, as a leader, you need to be able to inspire your people to push ahead. And, you know, even when it feels difficulty, you know, difficulties and you feel like you're going to give up. And Juan was like, hey, Brennan, I know you want to give up right now. I was literally in his Jetta about like cry. You had a Jetta, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I had yeah, a Jetta. Yeah. I was about to cry. And he 2012 says, Jetta, let's true. go. True. And then yeah. it was great. It was beat up. But he said, <laughs> Brennan, will you just try one more month? You know, I understand you want to quit. Can we have this conversation for one month? If you quit in one month, we'll be done. Well, that week, you know, later, I got my first contract accepted. It was four months into my real estate career. Um, and then, you know, the rest is history. So, Juan, well, let's talk about that, though, right? Yeah. Because I think, like, especially our generation, mm -hmm. any generation, it's like we all like instant gratification. Yeah, sure. Right? And so you'll get into a career that you love. You won't see the fruit within three to four months and you want to quit. Literally, yeah, I want to quit. <laughs> I tried quitting. I mean, I tried. But like, I didn't want to quit. I tried quitting, and you said no. For sure, but but like, let's talk about that for a little bit. If like, I don't know if they're getting into real estate or anything like that. Like, it took you what four months for you to get your first deal. I started in April. I got my first closing end of April, uh, but really end of September, beginning of September. So what's that? That's actually over four months. It was something like that. Yeah. So four months to get a paycheck. My first paycheck was three thousand bucks. It was like three thousand four hundred and twelve dollars. So you closed a deal. I closed one deal. Yeah. I drove hours and hours and hours for the deal, but yeah, I closed one deal. So the first so the first four months, uh -huh. you made zero. Literally negative because the the board being a realtor you had to pay money. So Tell us about the other eight months. Of that year? That. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's funny they said that. Uh, and the other eight months, you know, there was a growth. We started closing. You know, my I myself I was a solo agent at the time. I didn't have a team. I, the only person I was leading was myself. And, you know, I had probably closed, I think it was like 16 or 14 houses that year, like 16 houses through the first year. So I hadn't closed at all. And then after that, I was closing consecutively two deals a month, like a deal and a half. Yeah, every month I closed two deals after that. So, um, yeah, so that was pretty cool, man. For sure. what, what do you think was the difference between the first four months and then the eight months? Uh, well, you, were, you were probably doing the same thing. It's just that in real estate, mm -hmm. like, it takes a while to close a deal. No, yeah, no, I agree. I think... I think it's kind of like when a train takes off, right? Like a train starts and then, you know, we have a train station right outside of our office in Montclair. And when the train starts, it goes very slow. You hear it. But then I know where it goes. And it starts like gaining more momentum. And then, you know, it's full steam ahead. 
Yeah. And I think that's what, like, the first four months where I was just, like, throwing coal in the fire, making my prospecting. You knew how many times we go door knock. Oh, sorry, loud, right? <laughs> so how many times did we go door knocking? How many times did we? So it was a lot. So so there's you a know? story about a crazy torrential, like, torrential okay. downpour. Do you remember that? I don't remember. So We're out handing flyers to people's homes. Oh, I, think I, I mean. In Kearney. Maybe. No, no, in, at, I think somewhere in Union County. No, it was Carney, brother. There was another time oh, where it was raining so bad, and we're outside, and I'm oh, like, Brendan, let's get in my car. This is crazy. Because you think about it. Say you're, you're at home, you're relaxing. Yeah. It's crazy rain outside, and you see these, like, two guys like, handing out, like, bucks. just, <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, just handing out paper. You're yeah, like, true, do true. you guys need help? Like, I, I remember, remember Broadway. Oh, yeah, I remember this guy opening up the door, and it's, <laughs> it's like, crazy rain. Shh. And it's just so loud, a guy came here. <laughs> Right, and this guy opens, he starts smir- and I think he felt so bad for us, he just took some of our literature. Just just take it, just as a mercy. Yeah, and, and by the way, like, I used to be in real estate, right? Yeah, he and, used, oh, he, I should have said that. Well, like, and, and to finish the story, I, I remember being like, Brendan, let's get in my car. And you're like, no, mm, no, true. Wow. no. I'm like, do you really want to, like, do this right now, the, like, torrential, like, it was crazy. And that he was said, so crazy. Well, and he was like, no. It's crazy right now. But like, I, I'm like considering the reason I think that you've been so successful is because even when you didn't see the fruit of your labor, mm-hmm. you still kept the same character. Mm-hmm. It just, it kept on going and eventually your, yeah. your character will come through. No, I agree. And your character will come through, especially, and I think it's a really cool aspect because from there, you know, I didn't have anyone looking at, up for me or out to me or anything like that. I was by myself. You were actually building me up. You know, you were looking to build me more than I was looking to build you, right? At the time, you mm-hmm. had been in real estate for a year. You were already doing Two years at that point. Two years at that point, yeah. So you were already much more experienced than I was. Um, but I, I, that same drive that, you know, I, you know, I compounded and built upon and built upon and built upon and built upon. That same drive I ended up doing, uh, with, you know, and there was in that torrential downpour, the rain, right? I remember, what, I think I was wearing like a white shirt too. I was so... I don't know. But I, I but it don't was know tight. what it was tight. It was tight. And you so, used to work out back then. I, I still work. That's yeah. crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> you you work well, out. You no, look good. You look good. You I look, look good. all right. I guess now I'm definitely working after this. But um, no, but in all seriousness, so I think that's kind of the path that I saw from uh, you know me. I think you're right. Like I really com- committed like a drive. No matter the difficulty, keep driving, keep pushing, and that ultimately did lead to uh, you know a small degree of success and now a building degree of success. But it, that's amazing. Yeah, for sure, man. It, it's definitely amazing. And think about that, like, what we just said, we sold, maybe sold, you know, my first year sold maybe 16 houses, right? This year, we're already, you know, we're looking at selling over 120 houses this year. How many people do you have on your team? So, we, we just grew a lot. So, when I see the number, it sounds like, oh, wow, my gosh, 120. But in reality, it's myself as a, you know, you know myself, we have Brent, Brent McCulley, he's amazing, he's amazing, he's a brilliant man, a partner, et cetera. Um, we have Zach, who just joined. We have Milton, who joined two months ago. And then we have Alex, who joined six months ago. Now, that's the sales side. So we have five sales, and then we have one inside sales agent. His name is Steven Enriquez. He's an amazing guy. He's unbelievable on the phones. If you picked up the phone, this guy would lead you to the sale. And then on our support staff, we have Andrea Soto, Kiana Dunthorne. She's an amazing woman. A brilliant, once again, Andrea and Kiana are amazing. And then you have probably the most persuasive woman you've ever met, Nicole Vieira. Um, and then you have Thomas. He's our Thomas Leonza. He's our photographer, videographer, content creator. The best man on the planet. Best man on the planet. He is, to be completely honest, watching this video right now. He's recording it. So, um, and then we have our final is uh, Anna. And Anna, she, she just hired us. She's we just hired her. She's more compliance, more tech, more like making sure. And we have another person coming in, Savannah. So it's all love. So if I could be honest, right? Yeah. Like, we're in our twenties. Cool. And we're scrolling through Instagram. Okay. And you see this guy, you see this guy named Brendan Da Silva posting these posting these new deals that he just closed. Okay. You see this guy, Brendan Da Silva, like probably making good money. Let's just be honest, right? You see this guy, Brendan Da Silva, building a team. Mm-hmm. And I heard something once. It's like, don't compare your highlight reel to someone's behind the scenes. Mm, true. I right? agree. And like, if I'm watching what you're doing, if I can be honest, and I'm in my 20s, I'm seeing your success, but I'm not seeing your sacrifice. Oh yeah, and I think that's one thing. Like I have an agent to call and they wanna, oh, how'd you get there? And I, or like, oh, what can I do? You can't do anything today. Like you can't right. solve it today. Like you were saying about your gratification. Yeah, and it's like, that's our culture, right? Mm. Cause it's like with Instagram, with, with Instagram, you, you, can, you can make your life better than what it is, or if it's really that good, people mm-hmm. don't see what you did to get there. That's true. 
So like, w- the fact of the matter is, people are going to struggle with jealousy. Like they're going to want to see these things, but they don't realize how hard they have to work. So if someone's yeah. watching this, right, and I don't know where everyone's a leader, either they're the leader of their home, mm-hmm. the leader of the organization, the leader of their own lives, leader of their own lives. Yeah. Like, That's it. what are some of the behind the scenes stuff? that you feel like no one sees, but is very crucial for anyone? I would say behind the scenes stuff. Um, I would say most likely it's people think like, oh my gosh, you're so, someone always two things, right? It's a perspective, right? Like I never call myself, oh, I'm super hard worker. I'm such a hard worker. I think about hard work, I think about like my father, he's like 62 years old, about, about to turn 60 rather. And he's like at 10 p.m. on a Saturday night doing manual labor. Like that's a hard worker. So I think behind the scenes, I never like pat myself on the back and be like, "Oh, Brandon, you're so cool," right? Like never hear me say that. Um, and then two, pretty big behind the scenes. I think you have to understand there are moments that you want to quit. Like there are moments you want to skip. Like there are moments that I think people are like you know you love this. It's so easy for you. Boom, boom. And you have to portray that so you motivate people. But the reality is, like you want to inspire people. You don't want your team members thinking, "Oh, I'm going to quit." Then my my boss is about to shut down. Right? It's a little spooky. <laughs> So, you know, but you do have that feeling like, man, this is tough. Emotionally, financially, you're betting everything, right? So behind the scenes, I think one thing I would tell someone who's starting up is there are going to be some dark moments that you're going to be like, you know, you lost three deals in a row and you're like, or, you know, you were expecting that, you know, partnership to work out and it didn't. Um, that you'd be like, well, I can't get, this is, this is it, I'm done. Or like and, losing deals. Yeah, losing Losing deals ends up killing you, but you end up, after you succeed to a certain level and you don't need the money as much, you start realizing that what really kills you is when like a client, you know, just really just, yeah, I'm, I take things a little bit too personal. When a client will just come at your neck and just like curse you off or say blah, 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 and you just feel, and you know the client's upset, right? It's nothing to do with me. And same thing as a leader. You may see one of the people you're leading, it's so frustrated. You have to, and that really is what makes me want to quit. When like, when a, let's say a team member says like, oh, I'm so upset or oh, I, I don't, you know, you're terrible or, or, or you're like, oh, I, and then it never gets that extreme. You know what I'm talking about when you have disputes in the workplace and or like, you know, in, in church, when you say, ah, like you can take it as a reflection of your own character and that can make you want to quit, but you have to recognize, no, this is actually not my character. This is on them. And you know, this actually is not a reflection of my leadership. I'm giving it my all. Yeah. Right, this has nothing to do with that person. Right, it had nothing to do with me. This, this, this person's insecure. This person's dealing out of a scarcity mentality, entitlement. This person, uh, they don't know. Like they want what you, they want what you may have as a lead, but they don't know that the sacrifice is not something they want. Yeah, they just want it because you're number one. But they don't, they don't really care. Like, yeah, that's how I see it. But that's why I see it. It's not like most of life. Like, so Instagram makes everything look sexy. Very sexy, very hot, very like, 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 like. In reality, it's not like that. Like, in fact, like no one sees you make hundreds of calls. I lit no one. How you calls? Nothing. I'm talking about just getting punched in the face. Like, literally. Like, uh, one of my good friends who was a seller, and then the next thing, he's like, "Your whole team is incompetent." And I'm like, oh, and "Like it hurts. Take the jerk off." Wait, they said that to you? They said that to me. And now I'm like, my friend, you're not. We're not incompetent. Oh you know. And, and then he, he made a good point though. He's like, yeah, "Listen, this issue should have been resolved two weeks ago. Like, we did resolve the issue." Meanwhile, though, we didn't resolve the issue. We sent another email that we never followed up on, so it was our fault. But So we take ownership. Hey, listen, this is our fault. We apologize. But the, the, you, you expect out of a friend or out of a coworker a level of respect, but you, you're not entitled to that. So if a client comes back and they start bah, 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 you know, what are you going to do? Just going to take it and be like, hey, I, re- I recognize your fault. You know, you hear that you validate the concern as a leader. You, don't, you have to make sure you're not taking it personal. This is not who I am as a human being. I'm much more than a realtor. And, really? Uh, I'm not, maybe not much more, but <laughs> I don't know. But, um, hey, but Juan, let me ask you a question. As you were back in real estate, now, what is your, okay, what's your role at the church here? The so, big church, what, what is your role? Sure, sure. Have? So I'm the pastor of engagement, which okay. is super dope. Really cool. You know, because the fact of the matter is people walk inside of a church. Okay. And it's a bigger church. By the way, shout out to Pastor Terry Smith. Wrote a book, and this is just a plug. It's called The Hos- Hospitable Leader. I saw a mug with actually. Yo, he combined leadership and hospitality together. Hmm. I mean, you need that. First of all, like every leader need needs to read it. I'm, I'm not reading it. It's, me too. It's a plug. Order right? ten. If you're listening, we'll read it. We'll do a book study. No, I'm serious. But so I'm here, and um, I'm the pastor of engagement. Because hmm. I don't know if people are watching this, if they're you know familiar with the church world, but a lot of people come in, and sometimes people will come into a service, but they'll drown out. They'll fall through the cracks. 
They'll come on a Sunday and leave. My job here is to make sure they're not falling through the cracks. Wow. Are we plugging them into like a small group that meets throughout the week? Are we plugging into this or that? Yeah, and, and this is like good for, for any leader, right? Mm-hmm. Like people are going to be engaged with your organization and you want to make sure that they're not falling through the cracks. You're taking care of them, that they're plugged in. Yeah, well. You know what I mean? And so that's my job here. And and I used to be a real estate agent, as you know. Well, I know. Yeah, and, sure. uh, and you were very good. I was okay. Not as good as you. A different, at the same time, he, he says that, but he was like a realtor. He was like, at the same time, he was a realtor. He was like a basketball coach, saving the world. So it's a little different, right? I'm like, all I, all I do is real estate. You were like literally involved in five different projects. Yeah, so basically my job is here is to make sure no one falls through the cracks. Okay, that's your role. So what would you say, now look at that, you're really, and you have a team that you work yeah. with. Yeah. So what's the, what's the side of your team? Do you have like two, three, 10, 15, 20? Yeah, so I mean, I have the honor of being here. It's, it's absolutely amazing. But... We have, so for example, I'm over what we call life groups here, mm-hmm. which is our small groups. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you come into church on Sunday, there's sometimes thousands of people that walk in. Sure. It's, it's a big crowd, but a lot of people want to be connected. They want community. So we have these little things called wow. life groups, small groups. They meet in people's homes. It's 10 to 20 people that meet and connect. Wow. I'm over all those leaders that have those. Mm. And so we have, I think, around close to 40 life group leaders. So you're... Right. How do you manage? You know, how do you not you? Would you say you're? Would you say you're a better manager? Would you say you're a better leader? I'm you not a good manager at all. You know okay. what I mean? Um, I'm a how do you define management? Define so management, it's a good question. I've, I haven't really thought about this in a long time. I, I think I think it's one thing to be good at management, and another thing to be a good visionary, hmm. and then be a good administrator. My sphere is I'm a good visionary. I want to dream. I want to look ahead. That's your. That's what you say. Your strength. Is. Absolutely, we got to I dream relate. ahead. We, I relate. We we got to look so forward. You're running. You're running faster. Right. You're trying to drive, but the road's not built yet. My job, I feel like my. You have to know what your strengths are as a leader. Mm-hmm. My strength is to equip people to lead at their the best wow. that they can, and so we're gonna. I'm gonna have leaders. Yeah, un, under my leadership, that I want to make sure I give the tools and the encouragement. What so kind of people. tools would you give? Resources. So like, if they're life group leaders, they're leading discussions. Mm-hmm. Teach them how to be good discussions, how you, uh, leading discussions. So you want to teach them how to give good discussions, you're saying, right? Or like, for example, is this, right? Is this one-on-one? Is this group setting? How do you teach them? So, so like, like for example, right now it's in a group setting, like we had a launch, mm-hmm. where they all come into a room and we, we pitch vision. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're also putting coaches in place mm-hmm. so that the people who are leading their groups have a coach to call, right? And like this, it's better to, to expand and multiply. The fact of the matter is, you know, Jesus had 12 disciples. Like... Mm-hmm. It's impossible to be a leader and to try to personally lead 30 people out. No, it's not. Even leading 12 is very difficult. Yeah, yeah. So, you think like, you, can, you can't have 12 like, confidants. It's very tough. Very tough. And shoot, the 12 wants you to be. can't have three. Right? Right? No, you're right, though. And you, want, you know it's true. Yeah. And you, the, the 12 wants you to be the confidant. So, you need to have, like, but it's, so it's, a, it's a push. How do you handle that? How do you handle that push? Like, they, do you, would you see your life group? Are you in a relationship with them at a distance? Yeah. More intimately, what's like the yeah yeah. Right now, I'm, I you know I started about six months ago, so I'm, I'm figuring things out. But right now, we have about you know I think thirty eight to forty life group leaders, and yeah, I try to have a relationship with them. But the goal is you can obviously always do better, okay. and that's why I want to put coaches in place so that they have mm-hmm. people to support them and directly. Right. So the goal is that the I would actually support the coaches, and the coaches would take care of the life group leaders. So yeah. So essentially, if you think about the model, and we'll have Thomas drive. It's Juan Carlos, the little ball. And then maybe how many coaches per life group? Five, is right? One. Right now, one? you know, we're, we're in the discovery phase. We're seeing what's the best the goal? What would you say goal? Ten uh, to one. About four to five each. Okay, so let's say yeah. five to two, two, one life coach. Yeah. It's the same thing with real estate. It's the same thing. It's the same thing with any business model, right? One person cannot manage, right? Like we have Andrea, who I was just talking about. I'm sorry, we have me, the C, like the owner, right, operator, sales, and then you have Brent. Brent over here in this little bubble, he has sales agents and then Andrea has Kiana and even Kiana we even with her her sales agent she has one you know so Andrew manages Kiana or leads Kiana Kiana leads two or leads one about to become two so you see you need that like those like not pyramid but they're branches of the tree because you look at a tree right a big tree can cover so much more so true right? with the shade um, I do you know what's funny I was reading Maxwell uh, Maxwell and basically saying like like the 90s and you know early 2000s there's a huge push on what? Management. Sure. The goal was like people management, people management, people management. And then the late 2000s, two, then 2000 in the teens, now especially, the word is what? Leadership. Sure. Leadership. Leadership development. Leadership development. The early 2000s and 2000s. 
And if you look at like the difference in the nineties and late eighties, like management stuff, I feel like management was much more like, how do you get this person mm -hmm. to perform this task the best way possible? This is a difference to management. Management is about function, sure. right? How does this person cook this food the fastest? Let's manage them so they consistently cook the food the fastest. Production. Production. Task. Task. Yeah. Leadership is about development of the person. Sure. So that they make themselves make the food fast. That's right. And they can be empowered to make others make the food fast. Maxwell said something good too, though. Oh, tell me. He says that. Is yeah. it John Maxwell? He says that, you know, I think he said, I'm paraphrasing, but he oh. said, leaders uh, create followers. Great leaders create leaders. Yeah. Oh, right. I mean, let's think, but like, let's think about that though, because right now we're being taught that to be a good leader is a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. Well, that's just followers. It doesn't mean you're reproducing leadership in any yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, you're giving them value, but you're giving them value that powers them to give value. So I, yeah, I would say that the best leaders. It's so funny when I walk in a room. I like to look, I like to look at the room and see who the leader is, and I typically wow. no, and I do this for a reason. I will typically see who is making other people important. That's the leader in the room. Really? Yeah. What makes you say that? Because the best leaders know how to empower other people, know how to inspire other people. Mm. And so if I walk in a room and I'm seeing someone knowing how to make another person important, for me, that's great leadership. Mm. You know? I think it's more like, when I hear that, I think more of like, uh, it's leadership takes that. I don't think it'd be like, you know, company wide leadership. But it is like in the relational leadership, right? Sure. Like, when you, that's more of like Dale like Carnegie, when like, uh, how to win friends. Oh, how to win friends, right? That's a good book. Mad books. Mad books. Mad books. Right? But he basically says, like, the whole point in the book, like, summarized, is right. your job, if you want to win friends, if you want to influence others to do what you need them to do, sure. make them feel important. Yeah. Make them feel like it's their idea. Make them feel like you care about their opinion more than anyone else's. That's all it is, right? That's the whole spiel. Um, yeah, but, yeah, it's all up to it. And like, I, especially in sales. Yeah, no, for example, and, and that's the thing, leadership is funny though, right? Because we, it's like as a leader, you have to check your heart. You have to understand why you're doing what you're doing. I want the people in my life to know that I want them to grow way more than I, do things I never did. I think, I think that's what makes a great leader. As long as I'm walking with you, I'm gonna make sure that you succeed so much. Does that make sense? That for me is a good leader, and obviously leadership it ranges in definition. So you say leadership there is selfless and motivation. Um, I think it's influence. I think it's selflessness. I think it's empowerment. I think it's inspiring. I think it's example. I, leadership is so funny. I haven't been able to define what leadership is. Some people will say leadership is influence. I agree. Do you know but what, uh, there's just so much. Do you know where, Do you know how to find out if you're? This is Orlando Rivera. Uh, he was a pastor, professor at Nyack College. He said, "Excellent man. He passed away. He was a remarkable man." Um, he said, he's actually at the end of a few minutes, but anyways, he said, if you want to know you're a leader, look behind you. Are people following you? That's right. If not, you're not leading. You're going on a walk. <laughs> you're going on a walk. I guess so, yeah. That, that's not, you're not leading anywhere. You're, you're not leading, you're on a walk. walk. But that's how, I, that's how I saw, okay, so talk to me. What in, you know, you know me pretty well, I would say, what in the real estate industry do you feel ties into the church world in terms of leadership? Are, are there similar styles of leadership? Is it different? You know, what, what would you say is the biggest, you know, relation, what do you say the biggest differences between being a church leader and your time in real estate? Is it culture? Is it people? Is it motivation? It's what it's like. Like, so we live off principle. Mm -hmm. A principle is something that will work in any sphere of life. Does that make okay. sense? Okay. So one plus one here is going to be one plus one over there. Okay. Objective principle. Objective principle, okay. right? Okay. There are principles that will literally go into any sphere of life. Mm -hmm. For example, relationships. I don't care what industry you're in. Mm -hmm. Relationships are some of the greatest thing you'll ever have in your life. Agreed. Relationships. Right? What do you mean by relationships? Relationships um, are genuine friendships that are formed. Mm -hmm. Depending on what your industry is, obviously you don't want to be everyone's friend. Of course. But we're living in 2020 where you have to have emotional intelligence. Right? I'm sorry, I'm going to take something. Go ahead. How many friends would you say it's good to have? Ooh. As, a, as a leader. Define a friend. Mm. Wow. You know, are we are we saying a friend? Okay, let's let's use this. So you have different categories, right? You have confidant, right? You have like someone you know consigliere. You have like a you know, your main consigliere. You're in the mob, right? Sure. You have your lieutenants. Talk about people who you would say consider close, like people who you consider. You no, know, this is my guy. 
If I need something at 2 p.m., I'm going to call him. He's going to be here at 2.05. He's not going to be late. He's going to have a bath in the back, and we're, we're going. Like, you know, friend, like some reliable people who you spend a regular, consistent amount of time with. Let's say you spend, once a month, you spend time with this person. How many people do you say relationships, you say as a leader, because you're saying leadership, what, the relationship between church, and there you have relationships. I'm asking you a quick question. How many friendships should you have? Depends on your capacity. Mm-hmm. For you. For me? Mm-hmm. Um, How many solid friendships can you maintain? So you're talking about a friend who's a ride or die. Not your wife level. Sure. But someone you call and they show up. Um, personally? Three to six. That's a good number. Three to six. Three to six. It's funny because you want 12. Right? You, I, sure. At least for me, I'm like, no, I want, I want everyone's you, you can have 12, but will they be quality? Mm. I mean... Do you know what uh, my friend Sam Burrito says? What? He says, would you rather have 100 pennies or four quarters? So, <laughs> okay, so... I'd rather have a dollar. <laughs> I'd rather have 100 of them. But <laughs> 100 But uh, no, in all seriousness. Um, okay, so you're saying your relationships, it's a principle... To, so, so, to answer, so to answer your yeah. question clearly, right? Yeah. Your job as a real estate agent, you just hired someone for care, correct? Yeah, so her name is Savannah Kessler. Shout out. Can't wait to see you at, uh, She's coming from Tennessee, actually. No way. No, Tennessee. Where is she from? Phoenix. Phoenix. Oh, Phoenix she's coming from. Phoenix, and Arizona. Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona, for Let's sure. Go. And she was working at Make-A-Wish Foundation. Now she's coming on full-time uh, client care specialist. So client care specialist. Yeah. You understand that you want people to have a relationship with you and your organization and your people. Yes. They want, you don't want them to feel cared about. Yes, and I can't take care of all of them. Yeah, so for example, like especially in the church world, any organization, you want to make sure you're having a relationship with people. Mm-hmm. I heard something once, I thought it was mind blowing. He said, there's, they said that there's a difference between customer service and customer engagement. Mm-hmm. Customer service is responding to someone's needs because you did something wrong as an organization. Mm-hmm. That's, um, that's just customer service. Customer engagement is actively engaging with them, you starting the engagement, not them you starting, right? And that goes a long way now because now you'll have more loyalty, you'll have more client loyalty because they see you trying to engage with them. Mm. I think I think relationships wow. are one of the most powerful things in any in any organization. Okay, so relationships would you say that is a main similarity in leadership in church and leadership in real estate? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I agree. R- real estate is a relational business, right? Uh, from your who your realtor is to if you're going to accept a buyer's agent, right? Maybe they submit a bid. Do we have a good relation? Right. Right. Maybe you accept more. Maybe you accept less. You know, do you trust this buyer? Right. This relational. Um, even with your, you know, being leadership with your know, staff. Sure. Right. Yeah, look, this is we don't lead as long as, as you know as far as I go. I don't lead from a place of you know distance. I lead from a place of uh, empathy. I lead from a place of relationship, uh, relationally. You asked me what the biggest similarity. I don't know if it's the biggest similarities, right? Between it's a main similarity. I think you, right. I think you but, do well. But it's a principle it's that works. No, it is a main similarity. Right. It's relational. It's people focused. It's that's good. Right. Let me ask you a question. What do you think the, the the biggest difference is in what I do and what you do? To be honest with you, um, I definitely know that church. You know, as someone who went to school to be a pastor, interned in several churches, uh, grew up in the church, and active member of a church community. Um, I definitely know that within church leadership you can have snakes and wolves and conniving and the church is not perfect, right? We're not, you know, it's the whole beauty of the church and we're not perfect, we're made perfect in Christ. Um, and so that's valid. I got to say though, honestly, if you ask me like what's my, the biggest difference, I think in real estate leadership, it's tough. Because I want to say, you know, it's in real, in leadership real estate you have much more like you're dealing with like, you're, shark, you're in shark infested waters, okay? Your back is up against the wall. People are swinging, people are cutting, people are slashing and going and mashing. It's very serious. You literally live like this. You almost have a paranoia to you. And it's like a healthy fear, why? Because your competitor's right around the corner. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, the year 2000, dot com bubble, right? Boom, dot com bubble, Silicon Valley's about to go up, boom. What is Amazon? You know Amazon, right? Big. Amazon ends up partnering with Toys R Us. Whoa, you know this. Well, they partnered up and they had like a 10 year agreement, right? Ends up in, you know, basically what Amazon was going to do is Amazon, they were going to use their page for, they're going to be their basically online platform that Toys R Us was going to use to sell their product, right? And Toys R Us benefited because they were handling shipping logistics for the most part and marketing. 
And you know, Amazon benefited because as people went on for Toys R Us, they ended up staying on for other things, right? They got the traffic. This is huge, huge. Well, in 2005, litigation comes about between Amazon and Toys R Us. And in 2018, Toys R, Toys R Us, where I grew up playing Yu Yu Gi Oh, right? The, they had the competition back then. Uh, Toys R Us, where I grew up, they ended up going bankrupt. So even, look what I said, your partner ended up putting you in a position where ultimately you were it influenced you to become bankrupt. So I think in real estate, it is, it's different. It is a business world. You know, in church world, you do have the enemy, right? The, the, the whole spiritual battle of warfare that you need to be aware of. In real estate, your back is up against the wall and you really need to be like on guard constantly. What's the next competitor? What's the next industry? What's the next shift? Who's trying to beat you on the bid? Who's, who's trying to beat you on the bid? But even more, you know, iBuyer programs and online, you know, all these different things. Zillow, Zillow's trying to become a brokerage. These, these, these real issues, right? Um, and it's really interesting because I think the main issue between church leadership and real estate leadership is, like you said, it's definitely not relational. What people focus, I've, I've seen that in real estate, you are really going up against cutthroats, you know, straight. In church, people will over-spiritualize things. They'd be like, listen, I just don't think it's your season, right? In real estate, someone's like, go fly a kite, a little piece of crap, right? That's how it is, right? Um, so I think that's a main leadership. I think in le leading real estate, you're dealing with people who aren't super spiritualized, who's not a Christian background. This is a, this is ultimately can be a worldly business um, where people are motivated by money. And they're motivated by, they oftentimes give into greed. And they give in to self. And this happens in the church for sure, but I think it's more prominent and more vocal and even more celebrated in the business world. Like if you do something like that in the church world, ah, you messed up, we gotta pray for them. If you have the real estate world, they're clapping you along. Hey, you just up your level, bro. Right? So it's a different mindset. So I think the biggest challenge, the difference really is as a as a real estate leader, is as a person who cares for the holistic success of people, managing the little devil greed that they may have and not being able to really guide them um, kindly as sheep, you know, or like, not as sheep, but like really making these sheep like lions, right, building up lions, because you have wolves who are trying to kill the lions when they're babies, they're little cubs. And as a lion raising up lions, wait, well, I can't even say sheep, because my people aren't sheep, my people are lions. Like, I look at Milton, for example, the guy's a beast, sure. right? I look at Nicole, mother of two, single mother, crushing it, yeah. serious. So they're not sheep, they're lions. Yeah. But they're cubs, they're young, they're grown. So it's a it's shark infested waters. It's a very cutthroat, very and can be very vain, right? Yeah, sure. Very vain. Like who has the nicest car? Like one of my you know top guys just bought a brand new Lambo truck. Brought a brand new Lambo truck. Meanwhile, like in you know in, in the in the church, you wouldn't sell it. You wouldn't reward someone. Oh, here's a brand new Lambo you know truck. It'd be a little weird if you give your you know team member that, right? So anyways. But you said something crazy, right? So you were talking about real estate. Mm -hmm. You always have new programs coming out. Boom, boom, this boom, boom, coming out, boom, right? Boom, boom, and here's the thing: as a leader, you have to shift. Constant adaptation. Right. Constant and, and, ad adaptation. There you go. Yeah. Here's the thing: Yo, same with the church world. Mm -hmm. We just got hit by COVID. Okay. The way we have oh, done. Oh, wow, I didn't think about that. The way we have no, but you're, you're right in a sense. But yeah. the way we have done church has completely changed. Overnight. Oh, now you're in front of a camera. Constant. Now you're in someone's living room. That's where they watch Netflix, bro. Yeah, now and now, the right, and now, you see what yeah. I'm saying? No, that's crazy. So, so, so here's the thing with leadership, and, and now let's let's talk about this because it's the elephant in the room. Hmm. We're having this this right now. We're how many days before the election? Well, elephant in the room for sure. You're putting the election politics. Uh, November third. It's August. I think it's like August twelfth. Okay. Thirteen. Big elephant in the room. Our our co days. our country's divided. That's true. Our country's absolutely divided right now. You have. You can't say it's not divided. I it's agree. not. It's it, 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 There's definitely. It's polar. I agree. It, it's definitely polarizing. 100%. I mean, you know, we've seen the horrific. I mean, I can't even watch it. Um, the, the scene of George Floyd. I mean, I couldn't even. Yeah, very bad. Uh, very I, bad. I could. I can't. Yeah. I, I can't. Very I can't watch horrible. it. Very I think horrible. I went. I think I went ten seconds in. I, no, I would tell you something. I obviously it's like lucky. I did watch the full video. Right. Uh, I think the second clip released. I ended up watching as well. That was, you know. It was rough. That was beyond rough. That was like, it, I, I was in this. I was shocked when I read when I watched it. When I read, it, I was like, "What the heck?" And I was taking my full experience. Like, this is crazy. And I was like, "This is a little bit." And then I really watched. It. I was like, "It was rough." And that, for me, you know, as someone who grew up in privilege, you know, not financially, but in my race, etc., it's. I, it was really I, that I've watched way too many of those. That was the one that I was like, 
This is crazy. This cannot be real. How is it possible? Right, but that's the point, right? Yeah. Crazy times. Crazy. And I've learned something in leadership in this moment. You have to be ready to shift every day you wake up in the morning. Yeah, that's true. Right? And here's the thing, we get, so, we get so married to methodologies. Yeah, this is how we do things. This is the way it works. This is how you run Yo, out of the house. And, I, and I've learned. This is how you handle conflict. This is how you handle so yeah. much you you got to be able to you got to be able to shift. Yeah. You got to be up on your toes like a boxer. You got to be ready to move. Mm-hmm. Like if you're a basketball, I mean. That's true. Right? On your toes. You, well, you got to well you got to you got to you, bombs on your toes. Right. And so toes. especially if you play basketball for you, you got to know how to move. And totally. I think a lot of times in leadership, we will stay stagnant and something comes and we don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. The definition of a leader I think has to be to be able to shift and lead people as you do it. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And so, I don't know, do you have anything to say to that? Or Because it, and I, oh, now, now I remember why I brought that up. Yeah. You know, because the fact of the matter is, how are you supposed to lead people who are dealing with, with anxiety because of race? Mm. How are you supposed to now be a leader when you have a team that's divided? You walk in, uh, and this sales agent is a Republican, and this sales agent's a yes. Democrat. Yes. And then you got this person who's might be an atheist and, and this person is a Muslim right. or a so Christian. Just give you a story of my team. Our team used to be hundred percent Christian. It was me, Alex, Andrea, Brett. Sure. Christian, 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 Christian. Alex used to be a pastor, uh, a youth pastor. Uh, Andrea used to be a youth pastor. Um, we all all four of us went to school for pastoral ministry. We're all our pastors. And then we start hiring people. We have we hired uh, you know this guy who was Muslim. Then we start hiring some, we were white, Brazilian, white, Spanish, right? right. Two white, Spanish, Brazilian. Then we start hiring some who's, uh, uh, two great team members who are black. Then we hire two uh, great team members who are, we hired one great uh, Spanish, Portuguese. And then our team became very diverse. And you know, I didn't even realize, and this is just real life, this is not filtered. You, then you, someone makes an inappropriate comment. Okay, whoa, someone just said that. You know, and they never said, now, and then you have to say, okay, as a young business owner, as a leader of a small team, they're counting on me, right? We said that everything falls from top bottom as leadership, right? Everything goes pours from the top, <sighs> falls. So then how do you address that? How do you handle that comment? How do you handle that joke? How do you handle, you know, it's a lot of questions. That's crazy. It is, it is crazy, especially because that was all going on during the race riots. And then there were riots, protests, right? Protests, this is people were protesting in the streets. They were rioting, this, what, this is fact. There's a protest against the you know the the injustice in America. Wait, there's a protest. There were protests. Or a riot. They were both. Okay. They were both. They were rioting and they were protesting. There are both. There are two people. There are two, there are two groups, right? Yeah. And in our team, we have people with diverse views. So we had open conversation. Okay, how does that work? And then we realized, whoa, this person, like you, the way you're feeling, is inappropriate, right? To share the way that you're sharing is it's volatile. So how do we communicate that better, right? Or it's in, it's it's just rude, right? So how do we communicate better? And you want to say, okay, this was just not existing in the workplace. We're out. I, it didn't happen. So even as a team member, I, you know, I, as small as my influence is, right? I have a, I have a lot of influences with a small group, I guess, or a small influences with a medium-sized group. Um, you know, I, I remember just posting several different times about on social media about Black Lives Matter and why we believe that there is, you know, genuine, atrocious system systemic discrimination in America. And as a team member for the first time, you know, leading uh, men and women, at the time at least, um, who were black, and kind of feel, okay, well, how does this make you feel? What do you think about this? Okay, well, and just, you know, just, you don't want to push, them, hey, how do you feel? And even saying to one of my team members, um, you know, Kiana, she's black, and I asked her, I was like, Kiana, well, how does that, when someone said that, what does that make you feel? And I, was, I came from a place of humility. As a leader, you need to. I said, hey, I want to understand this. Share with me. How does, when you say, hey, God, I would love for you to give more guidance on this. Can you give more guidance on that for me? Would you mind telling, talking about that? Hey, if anything happens, can you guide us? Can you step up? Can you share with us? And I'm giving her responsibility. That truly, some may say it's rude. That's not her job. But I ask, can you? I ask for permission. And she is a wonderful woman that she is. She's amazing. She's a freaking rock star. She took it. So during these turbulent times, you're right, you have to adapt constantly because the world is constantly changing. You can't get comfortable or you will get left behind. I am not worried about a realtor who's been in business for 30 years and is the most successful realtor. I'm worried about the guy who, who, who is mm. you know, six years in, as hungry as he was day one, and as ready to learn as he was before he got in. Yeah. Right, that coachability, I learned. That, so that's, a, that's how I see it. You know, I don't see it, I see adaptability, especially in today with 2020 gone not nuts, um, and learning how to lead virtually, 
learning how to host them. You, you know, try to inspire someone when they just lost, you know, 50 grand, 30 grand, 20 grand. Try to inspire someone when they just lost their job. Try to encourage someone. It's tough. It's very tough. Very tough. Yeah. But you got to step up and you got to be adaptable and you got to make it work. So, so I guess, I guess, I guess to end this, right? Mm -hmm. We want to talk about what do we want to be known for when we pass away? As leaders or as people? In general. It could be okay. as a leader, it could be as a person. In your industry or at overall? Overall. You could, it could be in, in industry. What do you want to be known for? Oh my gosh, yo, Juan Carlos, I asked Juan Carlos, I said, Juan, what are we doing this for? He's like, I want to talk about leadership. I'm like, man, I'm a realtor. <laughs> I'm just trying to talk about real, real estate and give value to you guys. And, uh, for those I think who, this will give a value a lot. Yeah, you know, I agree. So um, <laughs> if you ask me, you know, I'm dead. I'm sorry, my, I'm sorry, Deb, I'm dead. Um, you know, what do I want my eulogy to be, something like that? I want people to know, first and foremost, that I was a man who really loved God and you know, Jesus Christ and recognized that he was loved by God. I'd want people to know that, I want, I want people to remember me as like, wow, this guy really had my back. Yeah. Like he, like I, he had my back, he was a leader. Like, not a le I don't care if people remember as a leader. I want people to, because it's even, our, it's so crazy for me to think about the chairman in as a leader, like it really is nuts. But I want people to be like, no, Brendan, like he wasn't perfect. He, you know, he didn't have it all together. He didn't pick up his phone as much as he should have. Some, but I like, I knew at the core, Brendan had me. And he like, he cared about me and he would do whatever it took to hold me down. So if you ask me what I want, I want people to know I love the Lord, the Lord loves me. And whether it be my sister, Teresa, um, Maria, my niece, or whether it be, you know, Ram and Natasha, two past clients I've had who became friends. I just over the house last week, the guy needs and I was eating some delicious curry and like delicious chow. Uh, thank you. Um, I want them to remember me as a man who loves God and really love them. That would be like, the, I really don't care if people remember me as a realtor. That's not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna get, I'm gonna be honest. I love real estate, I'm wrong, God, people, real estate, but I really don't like, it's not gonna make any difference in my life if you guys remember me as, the real estate mobile brand is so far. I, like, I would love much more so if you guys remember us. Wow, this guy really loved me. Like he oh. really cared about people across the street. You know, the definition of integrity is when your words match your life, mm. right? And sometimes like having integrity is being the That's same good. man you are as a real estate yeah. agent as you are at home to your wife. Mm. Wow. And sometimes we separate the two. Yeah, I separate for sure. It's like, hey, this is who I am in my office, but I'm going to be yeah. a different guy to my wife. My, my, when I call my wife, be, okay, I can tell you in work voice. I can tell you're working. And she'll tell me that. She'll say, like, she can hear the difference. Sure. Yeah, I mean, of course you're going to talk to people differently at different no, times. But, but then you bring that character. to your wife. Yeah. And that's no point. Bueno. That's right. That's awesome. Wow, man. Good. Who would you be? I want to be known as someone who inspired people to live better. Mm. You know? Of course, I want people to know me as someone who loved God. Literally, that's all I care about. But I want someone to view me as someone who empowered people and inspired people to live a better life. Wow. You know. So as long as I'm on earth, that's my mission statement. I have a mission statement for my life. Really? It's to inspire anyone I come around. Hmm. You know. To inspire anyone you come around. That's it. Anyone. And and of course, you know, as a leader, you understand. Inspire mission. is a big word. Of course. Inspire is more than emotion. But here's the thing, though. If, it's, if you inspire someone and they don't act upon it. It's just, but here's the thing: I know my lane. Mm. I know who I am. That's what you do. And you are more self-aware than most. Of course, and and here's the thing: of course, you want to equip people. Of course, mm -hmm. you want to empower and equip. You don't want to just empower and equip. Yeah. However, it's important to have. I believe it's important to have a mission statement for your life, and it's important to have a vision for your life and who you're going to be, and everything else falls off. If this is not inspiring and empowering people and equipping people, I'm not doing it. Wow. You know. And uh, yeah. Juan Carlos, I think you, I know that you've inspired and empowered me in my, and now I'm leading because you inspired me sure. you know, three and a half years ago. Sure. So it's very clear that he is a uh, man of integrity that. leading in conjunction with what he's, uh, his mission statement is for his life. So guys, uh, this is a little bit of uh, inside our brain. If you've listened this long, uh, click how down. long was that? For probably like an hour, honestly. But <laughs> click the ad below and I'm just kidding. Uh, we love you. Um, <laughs> Follow us on YouTube, not yeah, that. No. Uh, but listen, guys, have a great day. Brendan De Silva, Juan Carlos. Uh, we hope that you are killing it. So, <laughs> we hope you're killing it. Let's go. <laughs>